Before I get into the main course, guinea pig being an acquired taste, much more salty than say panda, this is a follow up to Kiwi Inventions number one. Link in the description for that. This number features more searches for the term, abstract designs, design disasters, full stop. The Patent Office of New Zealand has always been kept busy. In 1966, they received 3,447 applications, 75% odd from local inventors, 99% of those reinventions of the wheel, or how do I phrase it, improvements or counter concepts to an existing invention. Then from that 75% of the field, less than 1% at best went on to make their creator money. A similar percentage remain just concepts that never got further than design or nominal number of working models. Thus, we have a lot of working material to sift through. Sifting I will do. I'm not going to dwell on any one device. If you want to know more, you'll find the search facility at the New Zealand Patent Office fairly useful. Repeat, catering for the attention spans and some inventions and reinventions will be of interest to others and others not. I'm not dilly dallying or gone into greater depth research wise than what you already see. If anything, you'll doubtless find my list entertaining on regular occasions, hair raising and weird. Away we go. Rubbing your eyes won't make it go away. A model of the proposed Cook Strait Air Ferry in 1958, travelling north and south and vice versa. The embodiment of death on two wings. As if the ferry itself wasn't already hazardous enough, you could risk your life and limb in a converted Safia Argosy. Resting assured, in case of death, my guess one flight in five, your dependents can at least have a claim upon the family car, life insurance being instantly voided upon purchase of a ticket on unsafe. Outdoor RVs aren't something new. No combustion engine even required. Campers, wagons, trailers, caravans have all been allowing Kiwis to break free. And crap in nature since day dot. One of the products of Kiwi ingenuity meets market need for an accessible family accommodation. The need to compensate for limited pulling power of the average older car came out of Auckland in the 30s. The Headley Hayman, a pop-up caravan. You are looking at the unfolded trailer, ready to go bush or beach. By unfolded, I mean the sides are not erected. Approximate dimensions in this state, a brick like 5 foot 6 high and wide. Erecting the hayman was as simple as a crank. And bottom left is the trailer in its full glory. And cranked up, it's now approximately 6 foot 7 inches high, 11 foot 3 inches wide and 8 foot 6 inches long. According to the brochure, it's a five berth, a grand invention, unlike a rival in the recreational vehicle range. For the cheap asses in the 60s Kiwi suburbia, any Mr. B. Andersons, here is the tent on top. Get the nuclear family to travel and sleep, rather snugly, into and over the car. There's a reason why this is the first you've ever seen of it. Last as well, it, it sucked. sucked. John Crooks painted at airship and pictured majestically gliding over his hometown, Auckland, in 1886. Creative license, this never got off the drawing board, existed in concept only. Still, you get me up in that, well before the air ferry, and well before a don in Edward's diving dress, purpose built in 1939 for crawling along the bottoms of west coast rivers looking for gold pickers in the cracks and also at the same time becoming a drowning statistic. Hard to think of a better accessory for your diving dress is it than strapping on a Ross safety belt circa 1950, specialist kit for surf lifesavers used in the Royal Bog. Windsor SL4 1NJ, the HH Dimond Flush Husher, lifesaver for the overly self conscious person who doesn't want others to know they've gone and done number twos. If you happen to be one of those, joy of joy, 
HH Dimond are still going, still making low volume cistern valves. What is this? I'll tell you what, I will give you a 10 odd seconds to stare at the screen, formulate your best guess. Being the good sort I am, I will give you a clue. The 1917 patent was issued to Wheel Brands Noxious Weed and Scrub Exterminator Company. God, I gave you a couple of extra seconds and you still got it wrong. It's a fly killer. The bottom jar is full of poison, which uh, permeates the wicks. Perfect for any toddler to chew on as well. Clean green energy, a courtesy of the winds. Not in the least a new idea. This New Zealand attempt to make a commercially viable wind turbine was from almost exactly a century ago, 1925 ended up in the same drawer at the patent office in the folder beside Rainbow Chaser. The staff would pull it out on odd occasions over a few beers and have a bit of a laugh. Quick sidestep and whilst on the subject of historic lessons not learnt and in the same encompassing theme as saving the planet, getting angry at your dead grandparents as a sort of therapy for the mentally fragile. Those annoy the F out of you electric scooters were once called autopeds Autopeds similarly plagued US footpaths for a decade around about 1915 until they proved to be too much of a danger for pedestrians and riders alike. Back on home turf, a solid technology, a hundred odd ugly duckling retro call Stuart Scooters rolled off Jack Stewart's production line in Auckland between 1959 and 63 a mode of transport styled towards female clientele. You couldn't get into a too much trouble on these babies, which is more than can be said for their creator, Jack having lost a leg in a motorcycle accident a couple of decades earlier. Ever the inventor and tinkerer, Jack designed and built his own prosthetic leg. What happened to the company? At the exact same time, BSA had their own scooter in the chick bike market advertising the Sunbeam in New Zealand papers as the Rolls Royce of motorbikes. Had they promoted it as say, think a Honda 50, only nowhere as mechanically reliable. The name Sunbeam may be well remembered fondly today. Remembered at all. Rather, BSA bought out Stuart and closed the competition down in 1963. A decade later, they would be bankrupt. I know you like to be teased. Yes, that way. That 70 year old from the 70s has one of his revolutionary devices in front of him. Try and go one better than the fly trap this time. Come on, who hasn't seen a free energy machine? technically a pulsed energy motor. I mean, what practical use could come of a free energy machine? For the more technically minded, here is the design. For the more lazy of mind, like me, there's heaps of videos on one spinning. The blurb to this allude to the conspiracy theories that surrounded Adams. The exact same conspiracies that swirled around another fellow Kiwi inventor, Archie Blue, who at the very same time came up with a combustion engine that he said ran on water. In Archie's case, the Arabs were going to purchase the patent, effectively bury it. That video link I did on that subject will pop up at the end, and it's also in the description as well. Because of the potential of Adam's invention, both commercial interests and the government were all over it like a rash. At one point, the file ended up on this bloke's desk, top New Zealand public servant, and at the same time, in his part-time, Soviet spy, Bill Such. Link to the spy that got away is also in the description. There's enough intrigue in the Adams energy machine for me to put it to one side and do a video on that saga later on next year. 
Still, I can trump your car that runs on water and free energy machine with a death spray. Move over Nikolai Tesla. You can bet your bottom dollar the military apparatus will cock a hoop at the potential of Mr. Penny's Wunderweapen. Whisked him away out of harm's way, setting him up on his own dedicated island, complete with a laboratory and 24-hour armed patrols. What happened there is also in the link in the description. No need to go into too much detail on Canterbury and Stuart McLean's 1969 Lilliput motorbike. We are left with just one question. What pray tell is this? You are currently batting zero from two, quiz wise. Big clue here, it's clearly on a farm. Away you go. Necessity being the mother of invention, New Zealand farmers been hands on sort of blokes. Sheep have been prone to the odd infestation. The odd cocky decided to bypass dipping and dunking the flock. They instead built industrial sized showers to dose 10 dozen at a time. Indeed, it's a sheep shower. The portable, static, and smaller commercial versions of which are still about today. According to my eyesight, not so much the homemade, but I open it to the audience if you want to beg to differ. On the subject of sheep, Wanganui pharmacist William Owens sheeped it from the late 1880s. Add water, 400 gallons to one tin. It went a long way. Those tins, full of Owens' concoction, were actually exported to the United Kingdom. Still with sheep, you are well and truly know now that you are watching a Made in NZ video. Podrill transports a three-tier sheep truck 1920. Those tyres look rather sturdy and solid, not exactly giving man and beast a smooth ride. Bags not be housed on the bottom tier. The year was 1904 and kerosene was plentiful, useful also to heat the house. Stratford engineer Alexander W. Reed commands his magnificent homemade horses carriage. The chain-driven two-cylinder beast produced a whopping four horsepower, about on par with the scooter from before. Top speed, wait for it, 25 kilometres per hour. And with that, I've done with this one. You don't need to go anywhere else though, when I can further titillate you with Kiwi Death Rays, combustion engines that run on water and New Zealand civil servants getting collared by coppers in uh, dodgy Wellington parks whilst passing on packages slash sensitive information to Russian diplomats. Since there will be a number three in the series, you can always send me some entries in the comments. The wackier the better. In fact, for every novel submission, I'll send you home with a personalised stamp on your hand. Bye for now.